saw your Facebook post of all the stuff. Oh, yeah. Can you share about that? What's going on in your life? Absolutely. So hi, everyone. Um, thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. And I'm going to echo what Michelle just said. Um, I have been attracted to this group. It's been uh, about a year or so, just coming to the events and um, in the cities that I can. And it's definitely a group of people that are consciously showing up for their business, but even more consciously showing up for the collective. And it's interesting because I'm going to be part of the innovation group in October. And I was thinking, well, what am I going to innovate about? I'm a media consultant, television host, so my, my sphere is communications and, and media. But what I'm really feeling called to talk about, and maybe we'll touch on a little bit of it here, is uh, the innovation around um, really moving from a very, very masculine paradigm of the way the world works, which is competitive, drive, force, aggressive, <coughs> keep the guy down, to, you know, I don't want to say a swing to the feminine, but definitely uh, a push towards the middle. And that's for men and for women. Um, females in business, and any of the women in this group will feel this. We grew up in a, in a generation where we were told, you can be president, you can be CEO, you can do it. Uh, but make sure you don't do it in a pink dress. You gotta put a black suit on and put your hair in a bun and, and, and really work hard. And so as women, we were, we were almost penalized for being too feminine. Heaven forbid you're emotional. Heaven forbid you're, um, you know, you're, you're dramatic. Heaven forbid you're unemotional. And in the same vein, we penalize the men for being too, ma too feminine. Don't cry, don't be vulnerable, don't share. And what we've done as a society is I feel we've really cut off our intuition and the emotional GPS that we have inside us. So for me, as a woman in business, I'm really finding that I've been living 90% in the masculine, and it's been great. I mean, I owned four houses before I turned 30. Um, it was excellent, but I was also working 80-hour weeks. I was in corporate finance, I was an investment banker, I was driving and striving, and, and I hadn't had a date in two years. I hadn't gone on a vacation in three. And I turned around and I thought, well, I can't do this for 30 more years. Um, so a swing into what is true to self. Um, so I, have a, I, I feel very called to just invite people to take a step and sort of listen to where do they want to be on that pendulum. Um, none of it is wrong. But if you can try to balance the masculine and the feminine, regardless of what your gender is, I think you show up as a more powerful human being. Very, very new world. Yeah. You're very, to be honest, the new world, and as you guys can all see, uh, the new world is very sensitive to respecting the energy of the masculine and feminine. I will cry about five times. You guys will touch my heart. <laughs> While we're here, I'm going to cry, and it's nothing bad. It's just that I'm really touched by things. So I celebrate that you are very aware of that. What else is going on in your world? Mm. Tell me more. Sure. So I um, host a talk show that is titled, the, the, the name of it is LA 40. And it's a play on the words Los Angeles and life after 40. Mm -hmm. So when I was a little girl, I was 15 years old. I had a dream in my heart. My dream was to be Barbara Walters meets Katie Couric, but brunette. Yeah. I was going to go to Hollywood, and I was going to do this. Um, now, I'm a small town girl from Calgary, Canada. So when it came time to, you know, 18, 19, go to university, I started having these limiting beliefs of who the heck am I to go to Hollywood, right? What if I go to Hollywood and I end up on Sunset Boulevard flipping burgers? You know, so I ignored the heart space, I ignored the soul space, I ignored all of the gifts of articulation and presentation that clearly come naturally to me, and I moved into a place of scarcity and fear, and I thought I better do finance because that'll give me a pension plan. So I did, and I proceeded to spend 10 years in corporate finance um, and just was finding my soul deteriorating, right? How many of you have been in a job where you just, it's that groundhog life, mm -hmm. and you're wondering why, like, there has to be more than this. So I was, I was crumbling, I was just like, I can't. Uh, so 29 and a half years old, I decide that's it, I'm done, got a big bonus, I'm going to live my life, I'm gonna be a TV host in Hollywood. Yes, you are. So here I am, 30, and what happens, ladies, in your 30s? The limiting beliefs come back, right? Yes, yes, the limiting beliefs come back. And they say to you, well, you should be focused on getting a husband and having babies and where's your family? And now you can't go to Hollywood. You're 10 years too late. So what happened is I allowed another 10 years to go by in that paradigm. In that paradigm of it's too late, I'm too old. Now, I was 34 and 35 and 36. Anyone in this 
room who was older than Matt is going to know that that was ridiculous. But that was what was going on in here. And so what I did is I moved from corporate finance into corporate communications. So I knew my path was towards media, I knew it was towards communications, and I thought, well, let's do the safe route and keep it corporate. And I did that for 10 more years. And I had a lovely next career, and I was representing yacht companies and luxury lifestyle and flying around on jets and private planes and wonderful life that I was telling myself, but I'm living it wrong because I don't have a husband. I don't have two kids. I haven't been divorced yet. Like, the stories we tell ourselves, it's crazy. Uh, so fast forward, right? No, but it's true. So here I am, 39 shows up. So Katerina, every 10 years, does a life assessment, right? 19, 29, 39. 39 years old, and I take a pause. And I say, wow, I have a good 40 years, 50 years of life left. How do I really want to show up? And I really wanted to go to Hollywood. So I wrote myself a letter from the age of 80 to my 39-year-old self. <laughs> I poured a glass of wine. I think I probably drank the bottle. <laughs> and I jogged away. I jogged away. And uh, my 80-year-old self says to me, beautiful, energetic, vibrant woman, get your head out of your ass and go to Hollywood. So at the age of 39, I did. And everyone told me, don't tell anyone how old you are. <laughs> right? Don't tell your agent. Don't tell anyone. OK. But as I naturally started speaking, it was inevitable. I was not 29. I was not 32. I was 40 years old. So I thought, well, how do I get the attention of NBC or ABC or CNN or any of these letters? Um, I have to be authentic. And so I pitched a creative idea. It got picked up by LA Talk Radio. And it was to start a program called Life After 40. Like, let's explore that. Why are we telling society that we're supposed to stop dreaming? Why are we telling society that we're going to start aching? Why are, we, why are we living in this world where we assume that life is supposed to get worse? I think it's supposed to get better. I think that all of the experience you and I have now is only intended to perpetuate the goodness that is Right? Absolutely. So 40 to 80, anyone in that right now? It's, it's go time. That's your time. Yeah. Right yeah. now That's is go time. time. And I love the idea. <laughs> and that the community of 40 plus is so needing the service. Uh, we have focus, especially Hollywood. There is a new Hollywood being created right now where you can see the, the socially conscious aspect of things. They want to bring light to a lot of things. So I'm grateful for that. Um, the first time we met was on a Zoom. Call. Yes. <laughs> we had a beautiful Zoom call. We have a mutual friend of ours. Uh, I do some, um, I'm an intuitive, so I just like to guide people to the spiritual aspect of things because it's so important to all, all of our lives. Um, and I just celebrated you immediately then. You have a beautiful energy about yourself. And I know that this is a, when you said that you had the, the, the Hollywood and you told yourself to go to Hollywood, I got chills. And I have a feeling that you're going to continue to grow and do wonderful things. I'm really excited about you. I'm excited about October. Um, how can we find you and how can we support you? Absolutely, so thank you for that. Um, the easiest way is actually if anyone, um, I, I, so again, going back to the professional element, I'm a media strategist, TV host, and I do a lot of work with entrepreneurs, visionaries, creatives who are looking for more exposure in the media. So anyone who's creating their own economy that knows that getting on TV, radio, print, and digital can help your business, please don't hesitate to reach out. The mistake new entrepreneurs are making right now is they're going 100% just digital. Mm -hmm. So they'll get their business Facebook page, mm -hmm. and that's awesome that your mom likes your page. <laughs> but you know, who, who else knows about you? There is um, a lot of third-party credibility that happens when people see you on your local Channel 6, mm -hmm. when they hear you on Sirius XM. So if you're not leveraging all four pillars, which are TV, radio, print, and digital, you are absolutely leaving money on the table. Um, so if you're looking for exposure, please hit me up. If you're a woman who is transitioning and trying to figure out, how do I write that book? How do I move to that city? How do I divorce that guy? Um, you know, again, reach out to me because it's, it's giving yourself mental permission to jump. And because I've done the jump a couple times, I have a roadmap and I can be of service in that capacity as well. I'm a mentor um, in that sense. So the best way for anyone who has a phone, or you can write this down, um, go to your text message area. 
And in the text message area at the top where you put the phone number, um, just type the number 797979, so 797979. And in the body of the text, type the word media. And that'll just throw you into my world. That will get you a link to my, um, my website. It'll get you direct access into my personal calendar. Um, and that's just the easiest. Otherwise, I try to spell my name, and it's a weird name. And, yeah. You know, I have this vision on the edge of a cliff, ready to survive. Yeah. It's exciting what you're doing. Thank you so much for joining us here in Miami. I'm so thankful for you. I'm excited about October as well. Oh,